Reb from rebisfabstash.com. Christy owns the shop. She's my daughter, but I do a lot of her samples and I certainly am addicted to making rope bowls. Not just rope bowls, but there are lots of things you can do with fabric wrapped rope crafts. There's even a Facebook page called Fabric Wrapped Rope Crafts. It's a wonderful Facebook page. Makes my poor little pitiful baskets here look like, <laughs> like really juvenile type things compared to what they do. But it's a great place to start, get lots of ideas. We did a previous video, which was starting rope craft. And in that video, I did a demonstration on how to get started. And I talked a lot about buying a four millimeter macrame cord on Amazon. But now I wanna retract some of that. So I wanna show you the difference so that you can decide. Four millimeter craft uh, macrame cord on Amazon. It's cotton cord and it's twisted. It's fine, but when I made some of these baskets, for example, these were some of the ones I started out with. I made this one and I wrapped a ribbon around the inside and I made this one and put some vinyl on the inside. And the difference is with macrame cord, this is four millimeter twisted macrame cord. You can see that it's great for holding little lightweight things like bobbins and I put my scissors and my sometimes my little cutting tools right next to the sewing machine. But they're not really super sturdy. So after I had purchased, of course, 20 or 30 different colors on Amazon, I decided I needed to try something a little heavier. So I'm gonna finish showing you the last few little designs. I took ribbon that I bought that was kind of Halloween themed ribbon. And I got some little buttons of bugs and at Joann's or, um, I don't buy these on Amazon because they're pretty pricey on Amazon, but every now and then Joann's will have buy three, get three free. So then I would buy the buttons because you get five or six in a package and even though they're about four bucks each, you still end up getting um, equivalent of $2 for five buttons. So that was okay. So these are again, are not quite as sturdy. Um, I did some braiding. So this one here, I took some fabric in the bottom and then I braided around the top. I just wrapped it one time. It wasn't actually a braid. It just twisted two pieces of cord together and then I secured it with a little bit of hot glue and a button. When you put these on, you do add this by sewing this on while you're in, you're making your bowl. You're actually in that process and you're stitching right in there between that to add those. Then you twist it around, hot glue it, and it stays. So that was just one effect I did. And again, these were those little bowls. And that's all of the macrame cord. Oops, sorry, one more. Uh, I did some flat items. I really liked this panel. I cut this beautiful panel out with all these beautiful hummingbirds. And what I did was I just did the macrame background. This is macrame cord. Again, it's not very super sturdy, but I wanted it to be a little sturdier in the center. So what I did is I took a piece of Peltex or the Deco Bond, any of the, sorry, the heavier little, um, that kind of a stabilizer you would use for making bags and different things. And I cut a piece and put it underneath here. Then I used heat and bond light to attach the fabric to the deco bond. And then I put heat and bond on the back of the deco bond and attached it to this actual base that I did. Little loop and you can hang it in the bathroom or somewhere like that. So I really liked these uh, panels. Good use of panels when you're not sure what to do with a panel. Maybe you don't have any of the fabric left from the original design, doesn't matter. Panels make great, or even any beautiful colored fabric you like, make great centers for something like this. Okay, after doing macrame cord, I decided to do what everybody else was talking about, which was buying cotton rope. So I found this 
Scotty cotton clothesline cord. You can get it various different places. People buy it at Walmart and a lot of people, they use, it's a different brand. I think it's called Allendale or something. Lots of different brands of, you're looking for cotton braided, braided, not twisted, braided rope. So this one here is 100 feet and the size is 730 seconds. And the reason that's important is it gives you a little more stability. It's larger, it's six millimeters or larger, but it works really, really good to use for the bowls. Now I'm gonna show you what I used, did using cotton rope. I started again on the same theme of uh, putting a Jody Houghton design. She has an Etsy website, but she pre-prints these really cute little, I'm gonna show you another one next. These really cute, um, she has everything from quilting ladies, the quilting sisters, uh, what happens at quilt camp stays at quilt camp, all kinds of cute stuff, flamingos, dogs, cats, goats, um, lots of flowers and lots of um, religious sayings. So I bought these, cut them out, put shape flex on the back, put heat and bond behind the shape flex because I wanted to make sure I had a really stable center. I went ahead and made the center of this rope. This is using rope craft. Then I wrapped ribbon and I'm gonna show how to do that today. Wrapped ribbon around the edges and end with a loop. But this is sturdier than the macrame cord. So I made this one using that effect. All of us have had fabric um, silk flowers that we've had over the years. And some of us may have pieces, bits we've used on other craft projects. Or my favorite place, the dollar store, has lots of them. I just bought several small ones and then I snip the flowers off and I hot glue them on and it just gives it a nice little effect. In the square, I did basically go back and forth on the square on a piece of square Peltex. I cut it exactly six inches square, and I went back and forth with the rope like this, securing it down with a zigzag stitch, and then I start going around after I finish the edge, and it makes it a perfect square as opposed to, if you don't have something to attach it to, it starts to look more like a circle than it does like a square. So that worked really good and I'll show that on the next video. So again, rope, rope. Then I started making um, wrapping fabric around there and then I started making some buttons. I also started doing different twisting, fabric wrapped swirl on the back and I just did some random twisting, all hot glued right there. And then this cute little button in the center. I just took buttons and we all have tons of buttons. And then I hot glued one on top of the other. Anything that has a shank, I just cut the shank off and hot glued it to this flat button. Gave it a really cute center and it works perfect for something like this. Beautiful and floral. So I made some rope baskets with cafe fabric. And it's just to kind of show you the difference how pretty they are inside the baskets, really pretty. The back, some people like to put felt on the back or they like to put another piece of fabric that they've put over a circle of Peltex, they've covered it, glued it around. The, uh, if somebody wants to pick up the back of my baskets and look, they're welcome to, but I'm not too buzzed about that. I'm gonna show you how to cut these strips because I'm gonna stand up here a second and grab this. All of these CAFE strips that I bought were this size, six inch strips. And I did not cut them length to length. Instead, I cut them on the bias from this corner to this corner. And it worked perfect because it still kept it from raveling. And that's what's important is you don't want it to ravel. So if you cut that fabric from here to here, in three quarter inch or one inch strips, it's gonna ravel and it's gonna have you more frustrated than you can imagine. So cutting it from that corner to the bottom corner, top corner to the bottom corner, whether it be a fat quarter or a strip of fabric, it works great and you don't waste fabric. So it's a great technique to use for doing your strips. 
So this one, again, I used a shank button, cut off the end, and um, just glued it onto a, one of the multitudes of buttons I have. And this one's a little bit deeper. And again, it's a little more stable than using um, the macrame cord. So a couple more that I'm going to show you that are square. This one was a square one and I used, this is a Jason Yenter fabric, I think called the Groovy Garden. And it had a panel. And again, I put a little bit of Decobond or Peltex underneath it just to kind of give it a little bit of stability in the bottom. Made a cute little button here. And this panel was so, so fun to use just putting bright colored fabrics with a really cute panel in the bottom. Okay, so I think I've covered all the, oh, here's a couple more. Here's another macrame cord that I used, a Kimberbell panel, red, white, and bloom. And I made some simple bowls with cute little bugs. I love bugs, bugs on the buttons. And these were just fun to do, really easy. So I still have all this macrame cord I have to use up. So that was another macrame cord. Then I did another one of those red, white, and bloom panels and I braided. This time I actually used three different colored rope of the macrame cord. And I started from here and I literally braided it long enough to go all the way around and end with a little bit of fringe, which I purposely fringed out and put a little button on it. But there's so much fun to do and you can use any panel or any pretty fabric you have that you like. So now the next thing I discovered was the dollar store. All of you have dollar stores where you live, most of you do. So the dollar store sells various types of cord. I found two particularly. Um, this one is called diamond braided rope and you get only 40 feet. So you're getting one bowl out of this where this cord, you're gonna get a minimum of two good size bowls. But this is gonna give you one bowl, the dollar store. Okay, and they had it in red, and you'll see that it's braided, but it's also got a speckles of some other color in here. And then they also carry this one, which is six millimeter by 10 meters. Okay, and it's got kind of a gold colored and I'm gonna show you a bowl I made with these. So this one here, I made this bowl. They have it in both the green and the blue, and I bought both colors, and this is even sturdier than the rope. So you can get this kind of cord, and I put a little button on the top that was just a sticker. Literally, it's a plastic sticker I got from the dollar store. They're two dimensional, so they've, they've literally got one on top of another. This was just temporary. I will actually put a flower on this, but for now, I stuck those on there just because I had them. This one is this rope, but it had, they had it in green and they had a couple other colors. And this one is six millimeters, six millimeter diameter. It's really sturdy. This bowl has got some substance. And what's nice is it's shiny, has this beautiful sheen to it, very sturdy, a really nice bowl. You could do this and then you could add decoration or you can wrap fabric around this. Now these first ones I made, I did not wrap fabric around. I just wanted to show the difference in using this as a solid bowl, beautiful green. It's a really beautiful forest, evergreen forest color. And what would look great at Christmas time is finding some green this color and some pink and gold, especially if it has metallic, which I have a lot of metallic fabric. I've never used it. I'm gonna cut little circles and make these flowers and make those and put these on these bowls. So two more. This one is that gold I showed you here, a little bit darker gold. Sometimes you can get it in this kind of a creamy gold and then this really vibrant gold. And my daughter loves sun. My youngest daughter, Katie, loves, loves sunflowers. So I thought, well, this one's got bees and sunflowers all over in it. So I made the button and the little flower. Sorry, I didn't make the button. I just glued the button on here, but I made the flower. It's basically sunflower fabric and bee fabric. But I braided, 
I, I made the bowl and while I was making this bowl, I wrapped fabric strips that were just sunflower fabric around here. Made a really cute bowl and she's getting that when she comes out to see us in June. And then this one was, they had some of this cord in the white and again with flex, flex in it. And so I took this really pretty fabric I had that had lots of bright colored flowers. And you can see that I made these, there's the button, the flower button I made. I wrapped the handle edge. I don't usually leave the top exposed, but I thought I would try that. Just the difference to see between putting fabric with a row of rope around the outside to secure everything or just leaving it with fabric on the top. So this one is really pretty. The bottom looks fine. Like I said, some people put stuff on the bottom and uh, this little button was really fun to do. So these are great gifts. You can make these up. This took maybe 40 minutes to make, except the flower probably took another six or seven. So I'm gonna tell you this took me less than an hour to make the whole thing from start to finish. Then I got to, got kind of carried away with a couple other things. <clears throat> I decided, you know, with Easter coming, I would braid all of this macrame cord I have since I'm not gonna make many more bowls with it. So I braided, this took the longest because I took it in 20, there must have been probably 10 yard pieces. I took three 10 yard pieces and I braided the sections and then I wrapped it and hot glued it to a dollar store container made of plastic or acrylic. I bought dollar store little Easter gnomes, little dollar store things. You got a package of these and I cut the ends off so that it's just a little stick and I just stuck it down in here and I didn't glue it yet because I wanted to show you this. Then I had some foam eggs that I bought and I took a razor blade type cutter, um, a box cutter, but one that you can get the razor to stick out a little bit farther and cut down through the foam. You have to do it from the sides and go around real slow. Otherwise this foam wants to chip and then hot glued them all on here, put a little braid on there. And this one was really fun. I could have put handles on it, but I actually made this for a table center decoration. I'm gonna put that um, oasis from the flower shop and then I'm gonna stick a Easter floral arrangement inside this. So this will be available for our Easter table. A couple more products I was gonna talk about just because while you're at the dollar store, they always have really cool embellishment items you can get all kinds of fun stuff to attach to bowls. They always have beads during the holiday, various different holidays, and it's a good time to get an assortment of beads. These are actually wood beads, and they're, the hole is not gonna fit through one of these larger cords, but I'm gonna figure out a way to drape some of these, for example, maybe not in this color, but I'm gonna, figure out a way to drape something in here like this, something like this, around the bowl. You'll see on that fabric wrapped rope crafts website, they use lots of embellishments. When I can spend a buck and get all kinds of little goodies, I'm gonna do that as opposed to spending a lot of money. I do buy a significant amount of beads at Joann's, which right now they have four for $10 buying these sets of beads and I'm going to show you for example these are just beads that are by this company uh, Hildy and Joe and right now they're four for ten dollars and I found beautiful hearts and let's see um, right here they are so I found these four for ten dollars. So that means two fifty for this strand, and it has five good size hearts. These are made of a heavy acrylic type plastic, and I can glue these as my embellishments instead of doing a flower all the time. 
I save the beads for various other things that I'll use on here. But they had little candies and for Halloween, you got little pumpkins. So finding the, something that's on sale, four for $10, I'll buy some of these and I'll have a little assortment of those to use in my craft steam. Um, these were dollar store pins and they're actually a little, um, the pins you put into a bulletin board. Escapes me what they're actually called. I'm gonna, I cut the heads off of these with my little pliers. I just cut the heads off and then I can use that as the top of a button to kind of cover up the holes of the button. I don't want those to show. Um, these were part of the little gnome things. They were on a thing of garland. And um, ribbon, uh, these were those little gadgets you get here and ribbon, assortment of ribbon you can get anywhere, wherever you wanna buy ribbon. I even bought some online for Halloween. I bought a package of 20 different kinds of ribbon, little pieces like this, which I use to wrap when I make them my Halloween or Christmas themed, and I want ribbon. Ribbon is fast, it's easy, you don't have to cut anything and you have zero fraying. So wonderful thing to do for that. So those are some of the tools that you can get at Dollar Store, Joann's, Michael's, any of those places. Last but not least are stickers. You can find stickers at the Dollar Store that are 3D stickers. I got these bees and these little dots. And I don't know what I'm gonna use those for, but I'm gonna stick those dots on something around a button. These little square ones are a little bit padded, so they do have some dimension. And I use those kinds of things to add to my bowls to give them something more than just being a plain bowl. Um, last, I did talk about Jody Houghton and some of her designs. And she has an Etsy shop. I don't get any of this, um, any kind of, we don't have any kind of affiliation with her, but I love the fact that her designs are pre-printed they're a little thicker than just base fabric. They've got something on the back that's like a type of a stabilizer that you could use these by themselves with some heat and bond. I could take this one and cut it into a circle or I could put it inside of a square design. But like I said, this one here is sisterhood of quilting type thing, already pre-cut. She even has on the back where she shows that she makes bowls. And um, I'm into flamingos. I love flamingos and frogs and flowers also like bees. So put all these things, cute little ones, designs, goats. I said that she had goats, dogs and cats, and lots of sunflowers. So these are great little things to have to make your bowls go from being, oh yeah, that's kind of nice to really, really striking. Okay, the last thing I'm going to show you, and today we, uh, I will show you this one bowl I used, rope but I also use something that's pretty shiny, you'll see on here. While I was wrapping the rope, I, lots of people use this product they get at the dollar store. It's called mesh tube. And I took this mesh tube, I cut some strips, I literally shove it onto the end of the rope and just keep feeding it through. And then when I made the bowl, I literally you pull on this while you're wrapping and you'll see it's very elastic. And so you literally feed the end of your cord, your rope, you take the end of this and you literally feed it through here. And as you, after you get it started, you have to go back down to this end and you just keep feeding it through. And then you pull it and stretch it back down and you can feed this through the whole length of your cord. I'm going to go ahead and put both of them, both colors. Then when I make one bowl, I'm going to wrap it and I started with the purple. And then when I got to this location, I switched off and added gold or kind of this aqua colored ribbon. But you could have just kept going from this and changed to this color if you wanted, or you could have done some plain rope 
after you did the purple. And then, because this is already threaded on there, then you can just go ahead and when you get to the place where you want to start putting the aqua color, you just go ahead and start using the aqua color to go around. And it really makes a really lovely bowl. And again, it adds a little more stability even to the rope bowl. So lots of embellishments, lots of things you can find. You probably have lace at home and things like that. Having all of those things ready to go when you're ready to do your rope bowls. You start with a few and then get creative and go dig through your stash. See what do you have that you want to start using up. For me, buttons, ribbon. I've had more ribbon than I can tell you for years that I used to when I fold in half and stick inside a bag for a loop and put a key hanger, a keychain thing on it. So <clears throat> you all have fabric, you all have strips, you have yardage, you have fat quarters that you really thought, what am I going to do with? I've got this one piece left. Now I'm going to show you what you can do with it. One more thing. With all that macrame cord that I had, I decided what am I going to do with all of this now that I have all this macrame cord and I don't want to use it anymore to make bowls because I want my bowls to have a little more stability. These were four millimeter macrame cord. I didn't order five or six millimeter macrame cord. It's twisted. Twisted cord isn't as stable as braided cord. So you can always try a larger millimeter of cord, but it just use up what you have first if you've already bought some. So I decided to make some coasters and I just took some fabric I liked. And again, I put heat and bond on the back and I heat and bond it to the fabric disc I did and I put vinyl on the back so it won't slide. You wouldn't need the vinyl on the back. If you want it to be washable, don't put the vinyl on the back. But I just got to thinking on a slick coffee table, it might prevent it from sliding. So I put vinyl on it just for the fun of it. But some people could use that for the top too. Your choice. But I was just trying to use up some of the things I had. So <clears throat> that was another good choice. So now, I'm sorry, I digress. Back to where I was. So we'll see if this works good, but I wanna show you that when you cut these strips, of course I brought this ruler in, but did I bring a rotary cutter? No, I did not. So I'm gonna lay this down. You can see from the corner of this strip down to the corner of this strip. And I'm actually gonna cut it right here on the bias. Then I'm gonna drop it down an inch and a half and I'm either gonna flip it over, but I've, I've got it no matter which way you're doing it, a fat quarter or anything. It doesn't have to be exactly corner to corner. As long as you're cutting it off the straight edge and at least, I'm gonna say a 30 to 45 degree angle, you're gonna get a good strip that's not gonna ravel when you start wrapping rope bowls. So this piece here, I would just literally start cutting the strips, cut right here and then make my strip an inch, three quarters of an inch to an inch and a quarter. You can't. Some people use larger strips, um, I haven't tried that. So you'll have to experiment with some different things, but I found about a quarter and uh, inch and a quarter is about the largest strip I've cut. So great way to use up this beautiful K fabric. And I just mix colors, pick out a couple colors I like, and then I go ahead and cut them. But these six inch strips, I was gonna give away because I thought I'm not making any more quilts. I embroider and I do rope bowls now. So instead, cut from this corner, down to this corner, and then you've got enough of an edge on the bias that you get the stretch you need to wrap and it will not ravel. You don't want raveling while you're making your rope bowls. Some people, the first ones I did, I cut straight strips and the raveling was a nightmare. But you will find that if you cut one on the strip, you're having to deal with little strings as you wrap the cord. And when I show you, I'm gonna set my machine up and when I show you how you wrap the cord, you can see how quickly it would, if you cut this on the straight grain, that you'd end up with ravels really easily. So now I'm going to pause for a second while I set up the machine and I will start showing you how to create some of these pretty designs. Thanks very much and we hope y'all have fun bowling. <laughs>